Hello everybody and welcome to how to create a 2D game in Unity for beginners. Whether you're a programmer, designer, sound engineer or anything else, this tutorial will teach you how to build the main aspects of a 2D game. Let's start! So we start by creating a 2D project in Unity. I'm using 2019.3.1 but you can use any other version. In, this, in the empty scene I you'll have a camera and uh, I have the sprite renderer which is called Fox and I'll, I'll let you know what's, where to get these assets from and for the simplicity I've created 8 tiles of flooring each one has a box collider they're saying they can work as a, as a flooring so this assets is called Sunnyland you can get it free on the Unity Asset Store by going here it's called Sunnyland so it's really cool what we need to do in here is we need to get the goal and the goal is to create a 2D character with moving mechanics. Right now we'll start with having this object which is called a fox and has a sprite renderer with an image of, if you can see here, it's basically the first anima ideal animation of a, of a fox standing. We're not going to go into the animation here, we're going to go into the physics mechanics. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get convert this game object into a physics based object. For that we need the rigid body 2D because we're working in 2D environment here. So in the rigid body is basically the main element that's controlled by Unity physics system and it gives us all the features here. And uh, it gives us a mass, a velocity, a angular, force, torque, even a drag, all this stuff can be here. But we don't need to worry about all this stuff because it's all actually controlled by the rigid body component here. The only thing we need to do here is we need to make the collision detection from discrete into continuous so we can have uh, a smoother collision system here. Uh, this might happen and sometimes when you collide with objects or falling down it might jerk a little bit but if you make it continuous it will have a much more precise collision. And because we're working on a 2D game which we're gonna go left and right and stuff we don't want the character to actually rotate like this so we're gonna constrain here in the constraints section the freeze rotation on z-axis. So for here, this is all we need in the rigid body. The next thing what we need is, we gave it the whole uh, physics features, right? So like, if, if I play the game right now, it's gonna fall down. Let's see. See, it's, it's falling down, but it's not standing on the floor. Even though the floors have colliders on them, and they're not triggers, they're actually co normal colliders that can collide with other stuff. So what we need to create here is we need to make a collider. So this is something that actually depends on you and how your character looks here. Since our character here looks more of a humanoid, you know, fox and humanoid shape, uh, I'm, I'm not going to create a collider that looks like a cube or a circle. I'm going to choose a capsule collider. So we have here, we have a lot of 2D colliders. We have a box, circle, capsule, polygon, but for this one I'm going to use a capsule. For capsule, it, it comes as a, as a main circle, but you can play with the values here. And uh, if I play with the values enough, I can get to a much more desirable shape. So we can play with the offset and the size. I'll go with 2.2 and then decrease this by 0.5. And it should fit the, the actual character. But the main important thing is, it should the lower part should be where he steps down, not to not too far, not, not too like what I'm saying, like not too below because if you make it below, he will seem like he's floating, like now here. So if I have it dragged it down too much, he's gonna be standing, he's gonna be look like he's floating, you see. But if we make it raise it upwards, it's gonna seem more, you know, natural. So for this one, I decide to get it minus five, but again. It's all up to your character, so you can play with this as much as you want. So we have uh, done everything here in the editor. We have to step inside into the scripting now. So I'm going to create a script. I'm going to call it Fox. Okay. So we have this here. Let's delete the comments. I'm going to briefly explain a couple of things here. I'm going to create this method, this method, and the fixed update. So I can have a quick knowledge about what everything does. So basically, 
awake gets called whenever this script gets loaded in the scene, which is the earliest method can be called. And afterwards, the start comes in, and it's this is called once, this is called once, and then after the start, update is getting called every frame. And this method is really good for getting input and actually triggering uh, or detecting stuff that happens continuously. Whereas fixed update happens every fixed update, like every fixed frame, sorry. And this is used for mainly uh, the physics based interactions. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how everything falls in. But I'm going to delete the start because I'm not going to use it. I'm more of an awake fan. And uh, the, what we need to do first is we need to reference our rigid body. With this one, we, we'll create a place. Let me make it this way. We do comment, we go private fields. In here, we'll create uh, the rigid body. So in, uh, in Unity, whether you write private or don't, is it, it gives the same value. So let's do this thing. Let's rigid body 2D. I'm going to call it RB. You can call whatever you want. So this is a private. If you write private here, it's the same thing. Unless you write public, it's going to be public. So, but we don't want it to be public. So first thing we need to private, and in here we're going to have to reference it. To reference an object in here, we need to reference this rigid body to the script. What we need to do is we just go equals get component, and write rigid body 2D. Close this with the curly brackets and uh, sorry, close it with parentheses and we're fine. So we have set this up. I'm going to start explaining how can we move a body or actually a game object. There's a lot of ways and uh, the two most common ways are using uh, the rigid body or using what we call is tra transform, transform, oh, transform, translate, or so I'm going to make, let me, let me just make it proper here. Uh, this and then we get with your body that velocity so we have these two never mind uh, just ignore the errors here so in transform translate we actually move the object itself however we want and it takes a, a vector which means <coughs> sorry which means it can go up and down left and right and the same thing here goes with velocity the velocity gives you uh, the same directional vector two two or three depends if your rigid body 3d or 2d but the difference in transform translate and velocity is in translate it does not trigger the collision or anything physics based which is fine for getting stuff move around the screen without any interaction with them but here because we're going to use physics we're going to go with the velocity and uh, as we explained before anything that relates to physics has to be done in here that actually can like anything that relates to the rigid body itself can be done in here but what we need to do first is we need, to, we need to first get the script fox into the fox object. So you can either drag and drop it here, or you can drag and drop it here, or you can actually just click here and go fox, and we're done. So right now we have nothing in here because it's uh, we don't have anything public or serialized. So the good thing is, like if we start the game, we can see that the character falls down and stands on the full floor properly. That's fine, right? But we can't move left and right. So let's start with uh, getting input. So in order to make the character move left and right, we have to actually get the data from the keyboard or whatever joystick you have and uh, translate it into a, a vector 2 and then apply it to the rigid body. That's the whole concept. So we're going to go step by step. First, we need to get the input, right? To get the input, we, we call the input method and then get access. We have two values here. We have either get access or get. Okay, that's because we have to get, get raw access. And they both take the uh, access identifier, which is identified in the input system in Unity. Uh, get access gives us a range of values between minus one and one, whatever inside of it. So it could be minus one, it could be minus 0.3, it could be plus 1.33. But in the sake of this game, we want. Uh, you know constant values so we're gonna go with get raw and get raw gives us takes from the same thing but it gives us three values minus one zero and one and we're gonna go with we're gonna write here horizontal 
but oh wait, you get wrong, get access wrong. I think I wrote a mistake. My bad. So what this does, it takes the values from the uh, buttons left, right, or A and D, or it depends whatever it is. Like you can see it here in the uh, project settings, input manager, access, horizontal. So this is the whole thing. You can play with this however you want. We're gonna go with horizontal. So what did, what this gives? It gives a float value, and main is gonna be minus one for left, plus one for two, and zero if you're pressing nothing. In the, in that axis. What we need to do? We need to store this value, and we'll call it uh, move. Oh, sorry, horizontal, horizontal value. So we have created this. It's a private also, so we have to link it here and we get this value whenever we press left and right and to, and, and very useful tool for uh, you guys is uh, you can debug all everything that you're doing in here by just writing debug.log and I'm gonna debug this value here and then we'll see how it works and this will help us actually a lot if you have any mistakes or anything debugging is the main thing in programming so right now you see right, uh, the f you can do collapse, and which means it actually collapses all the same values and the same thing. So you can see on the right side it's actually calling zero 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 because update calls every frame. So this is getting called all, all the time. So we press le left, let's disable collapse. Left it goes minus one, right goes one, and that's it. So let's delete this. We got the values here, and then we have to apply it to the rigid body. Let's make a method here, call it move, and this move, oh no, move, and this move will need an input, and now I will call it vector2, and call it direction, okay, you can call whatever you want, I'm, I'm going to make name it this way. So in direction, what we need to do is, we need to make a, the, the rigid body velocity change, right, so in order to change it, we actually, actually, we actually make to make a, a vector2. This is a mathematical value that contains x and y value, and I'm going to create a target value, target velocity. Okay, that's better. And we're going to instantiate a vector two and give it the x and y value. So, since we're going to go work with going left and right, which is the x value, I'm going to keep the y value as it is. So the x value is actually this should be float. I, that's my mistake. Float direction. So when we, whenever we get the float we apply it into the x value so we have direction here and the y value will remain the same which is rigid body velocity dot y we're not going to play with the y value so right now in this method we get something called direction and then we make a vector 2 from it which is going to be either minus 1 or 1 and the y value will remain the same what we need to do next is rigid body velocity equals target target velocity this way we can have everything that we need properly all we need to do is we need to create move and then pass along this value the horizontal so what we what we're doing here mainly is we're setting the rigid body when the, whenever the game starts and then in each frame we're reading the input of the x value which is horizontal left and right and then the fix update, we're calling the move method along with this value. So if this value is zero, we'll get the vector two of zero and y minus one y. It depends. And then we're changing the velocity of the rigid body. If everything is fine here, we'll be able to move the character left and right. So let's get a test. So as long as you click left, you see it's moving left moving right we can see one problem here is he's really slow and then that's because this value here is really slow really so minimal and it actually really doesn't actually contribute to a lot of moving one thing about the physics system is every device or every machine can run its own, in its own frames so you can play this on a low-end PC which is gonna go with it can go like 15 frames per second, 
15 uh, frames per second or you can play it in a really strong gaming PC and goes like 120 and if we keep the value as it is here it's gonna differ like if you have high frames it's gonna move fast low frames go go slower but this is sh this shouldn't be like this it should be universal for all the machines so what you need to do is we need to apply what's called uh, time the delta time so it, it's up to you when you want to put it but the main thing is to put it in here but we're gonna do things step by step first thing we need to do is we need to work with public fields okay and I'm gonna make public float I'm gonna call it speed let's make it one by default but we can change it later what we're gonna do here we're gonna have to adjust this value here you know what Let, let's make something here. let's call float x value and x value will get the direction which is this one and then multiply it by the speed and then we take this value and we input it in here so here we have this variable value and then you'll see how we can, we can play with this inside unity editor let it load you see we have the speed of one so let's start the game so we can move left and right we can see it's still the same speed let's make it five it's actually much more faster now if we make it 10 it becomes even more faster this is amazing so the only thing left here is we have to make this value dependent like it, it doesn't have to be the, work the same for each frame like if it's high frame low frame it has to have the same speed so all we have to do is we have to make time that delta time with this value we'll have more stuff here more control on everything because if you keep it like this as I said it's gonna work slower for low end PCs and then faster for high end PCs but because in this uh, time at that time you have a really smaller value so we can see that one it becomes a really slow so we have to go with higher values like 100 maybe 500 so this looks fine now here one cool thing because 500 doesn't seem like a like a reasonable speed right so what we can do here is we can keep the speed as it is but multiply it by 100 okay it's up to you, you can play with the values here but for me personally I don't feel like having a high, high having 500 as a speed is realistic so if you have one that means 100 but it depends it all how it looks here one so one is slow right so I think five would be like three fast slightly faster so with this way we can have the character moving left and right with the physics like if I drag him up down he falls down and it looks really cool so for I think we're good for this episode. So we we'll, what we learned here is we converted a game object that has a sprite renderer into a physics-based object and added collider and then a script that enables us to read from the keyboard or the or any input system that we have and then convert it into a moving system to the left or right. If you have any questions, please post a comment under the video. And if you like this video, please hit the like or the subscribe for more interesting videos. And uh, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.